watching the Linux Unix Tech Channel, and now, here's your host, Data Pioneer. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Data Pioneer here with the Linux Unix Tech Channel, and um, today is the 28th of February, 2021, last day of February. Hope everybody's doing well out there. So what's on the cards today for the Linux Unix Tech Channel? Well, I thought I would uh, take a look at a distro of Linux that I had looked at about... Oh, about a year or four months ago. It's November, I think, of 2019. And that is MX Linux 19. And so we'll take a look at that uh, today and uh, see how it's improved. We're up to uh, MX Linux 19.3. And so we'll uh, spin up uh, that in our virtual box and then take a look at it and review it in this system setup and product review. Um, let me go out to the desktop, uh, to the browser rather and let's go to distrowatch.com take a look at MX Linux. Uh, MX Linux is a, a Debian stable Linux system. Uh, it's also in conjunction with uh, Anti-X Linux uh, the two combined and so they've joined forces so Debian stable and Anti-X combined uh, create the MX19. It's a great uh, operating system the last time I reviewed it if, if I recall I really liked what I saw, and so I'm looking forward to getting into this update to see if there's anything strikingly new, uh, or if, you know how it's improved. Uh, MX Linux originates from Greece, and it is uh, x86-64 and i686 architecture. It uh, its flagship desktop is the XFCE desktop, so it's a very light desktop. So it should be very light uh, when we get in. We'll check the memory usage on it and it should be low not as high as uh, some of the others uh, that we've seen um, it's a very popular uh, distro right now and in fact it is number one on uh, distro watches uh, radar so let's go out on to the uh, home page for MX Linux and here it is I'll put a link to this down below in the show notes on the video and um, so at mxlinux.org we have uh, this website here that uh, talks about MX Linux being a cooperative venture between Anti-X and the MX Linux communities. Uh, and then if you come up to uh, the download here, so if you click on the download link, that takes us out to this page here. And there are uh, several options that you have. Um, we're going to take a look at uh, the AHS version. So it's going to be MX-19.3 X64. It's going to be XFC, not KDE, but it's going to be the advanced hardware support 64-bit version that we're going to take a look at. And, um, and so that's the one I'm going to spin up today and review for you. Different ways to get MX Linux. You can go with the direct repo. You can choose to take uh, mirrors or you can uh, select torrents as well. And then you can verify the ISO file. So if you click on the direct repo, that takes you out here to SourceForge. And this is where I got uh, the ISO of MX Linux that I'm going to review today. Now if I come down the list, let me see if I can find it. Um, it is the AHS version of, uh, of the, here it is, MX19.3 underscore AHS underscore X64 ISO. <clears throat> it's not the SHA-256, but it, it's this, that particular distro of Linux that we're going to look at. And so let's go ahead and go out to uh, VirtualBox and spin this thing up and take a look at it. Alright, so I'm out on my VirtualBox 6.0 platform. And um, so let's click on Machine and New. And I'm going to call this MX19. Uh, I'm going to call it um, AHS underscore 64. Um, and that's what I'm going to call it, dash VM. All right. 19.3 actually. So MX19.3. There we go. Uh, it is based on Linux, not Windows, and it is based on Debian 64-bit and uh, Anti-X as well. So we'll just choose Debian 64-bit here. Let's click Next. 
Um, I want to give this thing 4 gigs of RAM, so that's 4096 megabytes. Click Next. Create the virtual hard uh, disk next. Create VDI. Click Next. Uh, dynamically allocated next. And I'm going to give this a little bit more than I normally do. I'm going to give this 30 gigabytes of, uh, of allocatable space. And I'm going to create that. Let's go to Settings. And here on Settings, uh, this is fine. System. Uh, we can untick the floppy, select the hard disk, and uh, run it up the pole there so that the hard disk uh, is ahead of the optical drive so that when we do restart the uh, operating system after installation, it will boot up on it instead of the optical drive. Uh, for processors, I'm going to give this two processors. And um, I have four a quad core. Uh, so let's for display. I'm going to give this 128 bit here and uh, V box SVGA as I normally do. I'll skip over storage. I'll come to that when it. Uh, I'll select that when it comes up and ask for it. Audio is fine. Network. I want to select off of NAT and select the bridge adapter and then USB. I want to select the USB 3.0 and click OK. So we're ready to fire this thing up. Let's go ahead and get started. I'll click Start. And let me uh, tick the box there and come down and select uh, MX19.3 AHS for Advanced Hardware Support. Click Choose. Click Start. View Full Screen and Switch. All right. Let's go ahead and hit the Enter key. Uh, actually, it is making me wait here, so uh, I'll wait a little bit longer and uh, let it come up on its own. So sometimes it does that. I'm not quite sure why it does that in VirtualBox, but sometimes it does. So I may have to wait for it to spin through all six of these, but that's okay. This is a November 11, 2020 build. Uh, like I said, the last time I looked at this, it was on November 22nd, actually, of 2019. So um, it was a year ago, uh, about a year and four months, actually. So this is March 1st, almost. So it should boot up here shortly. Here we go. And um, so it's running the live scripts now. We're going to install it right away. I'm not going to get into the live version, although you can do that. And, um, and check it out. And I would re recommend if you're going to install this on bare metal that you do that very thing. Go ahead and run the live version. Make sure everything is compatible with your hardware uh, before you actually do the install. But this is a virtual machine, so I don't really have to worry about that. So we come, should come up to a full background. There we go. I'm going to leave that background. And uh, let's click Close here. And here's the installer. So I'm going to click the installer and it, this is the installer here it's the MX Linux installer it's not the Calamaris installer that we looked at last time for the last distro that I reviewed for you um, let's go ahead and it says that it's a PC 105 um, that's good we're going to click next um, we're going to go ahead and not go we're not going to modify partitions we're not going to run the partition tool we're just going to select the uh, defaults here so we're going to auto install the, uh, using the entire disk. We're not going to encrypt. And I'm going to click next. And do you want to format? Yes, I do. So it's already started. It's going to be an MBR install. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and click next here. And I'm going to call this thing MX19-AHS-VM. Uh, um, I'm going to just leave it at example.dom for the computer domain. This is a virtual machine. Work group for the Samba server. That's fine. And click Next. And let me put in my name, username, data pioneer, default password, and confirm it. Come down to the root password, put that in. All right, confirmed. Do not want to auto log in. Uh, do not want to save the live desktop changes because I didn't make any. Let's click next. 
And so this is started. All right, so this is uh, starting the install uh, process. This should take about five to seven minutes, maybe a little less, uh, depending on your hardware. But when it is completed, I will uh, come back. Okay, so MX Linux has uh, completed this installation, and uh, I'm at the screen now where it says installation is complete. Uh, automatically reboot the system when the installer is closed, uh, is ticked, and so I'm just going to go ahead and select finish and restart. So I'll reboot the system, and uh, it may ask me to hit the enter key. I'm not quite sure here, but uh, it should be rebooting now. And yeah, it's asking me to hit the enter key. And if you recall, I've got the boot order up so that it should boot up. And there we go. All right, so we're on the hard drive. And let's go ahead and hit the enter key and boot into the system. Hopefully, it'll come up to 1920 by 1080. Won't have to mess with it after I log in. And uh, that way, we'll uh, be able to get into the review portion. This is completing the installation portion, getting ready to go into the review portion. So let me hit the, uh, inter the the password here for Data Pioneer and log in. Okay, I have a connection established. I've got my desktop out there, my background. This is the um, welcome screen and uh, you can take a look at this at yourself. I'm not going to get into this, but uh, it does have a few things on there that you might want to review. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. All right, so I've got 103 updates, but before I get into the updates, uh, I thought I would take a look and, um, well, no, let's just do the updates first, because then after we do the updates and restart, then I want to take a look at the memory usage. And so let me uh, do this. Let me select Terminal, Emulator, and uh, let's bring that up so that we can... Uh, uh, update the system and so this is uh, an aptitude based Debian system so I'll do a sudo apt update sudo apt upgrade and a dash y switch I'm going to put in my password and off we go alright so this is going to update I don't know how long this is going to take it shouldn't be very long um, now, it does have 103 packages, or 130 packages, I think it was. This is probably going to take a few minutes. That's actually more than that. 177 packages. This may take a while, so when it's completed, I will come back. Okay, so the update uh, procedure has completed. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned or not. I may have failed to mention this, but when I did the installation, it took about five minutes to do the install. It took about five minutes to do the update too, so uh, the upgrade. So it uh, is about as equally uh, intensive here on the upgrade as it was on the installation itself, um, but not too bad. Five minutes isn't all that all that bad uh, for an operating system, and I've I've done a lot, you know seen a lot worse. Um, all right, so we are done. So let's go ahead and I'm at the in the terminal. Let's do a reboot and reboot the system. Let's be super user. Sorry about that. And sudo reboot and reboot the system and uh, log in and then we'll get into the actual review portion uh, of this particular video. Um, so far I haven't seen a lot of changes, uh, although there may be. Um, we'll also take a look at a couple of things. Memory is one of the things I want to do first off the bat. So we'll get back in the terminal and uh, take a look at that. I'll probably spin up HTOP if it's available and take a look at it. All right, so we've got the login screen. It's a 1920 by 1080. That's great. Put in the password and uh, log in. Got a connection again established. It's a wired connection. Got my desktop again. Look, looking good. Um, we've got two icons out here. We'll talk about that in a moment. Let me uh, go ahead and get back into the terminal. So let me uh, come up here and do terminal. And let's, let me bump this up one more time. And let's see if HTOP is available. It is. 
All right, so let's look at it. We, we are at 490 megs out of 4 gigs. Not bad at all. That's very light. And, and the reason that it is, and I expected it to be light, is because it's uh, an XFCE desktop. Um, so uh, that, that's usually very light. All right, so we've got uh, uh, no swap there going on. We've got 2 gigs allocated for swap, but we don't have any swap actually active right now. We've got 109 tasks, 146 threads, one running. Load average is uh, 0 0.10 for one minute, 0 0.05 for two minutes, or five minutes, and 0 0.02 for 15 minutes. Uh, we've only been up for one minute and 34 seconds, so these figures are really good, okay? Uh, anything under two, because I gave you two processors, would be good. We're not pushing the system that much. Let me go ahead and quit this by hitting Q, and... Uh, you might be wondering whether uh, MX19 Linux uh, uses systemd or not. The way to find that out is to run the command ps-p1, and uh, that will tell you. So if you're running systemd, it will tell you it's systemd, but it says it's init. So that means it's using system5 init or sysv init. Uh, it's not running systemd. All right, so this is not a systemd system. All right, so let's go ahead and exit out of here. And uh, one of the first things I want to mention here is this conky off to the right-hand side, upper part of the screen. This is a conky, and it gives us the uh, the uh, hour and minute. So it's 11:11 11, 11 right now uh, on Sunday, February the 28th. It gives us some more information about hard disk usage: 20%, memory: 12%. And uh, CPU usage right now is actually at zero, so it's idle. Uh, now it's one and two, so it's going up and down. All right, so there's a couple of icons out here on the desktop. You've got the FAQ, and I'm going to leave these here for now, but um, you might want to just delete those at some point. I don't like icons on the desktop anymore. I used to, but not anymore. It clutters the desktop up. So I would get rid of this, but you might want to leave it and... Uh, there's some frequently asked questions that uh, might help you with getting some answers about uh, MX-19 if you're not familiar with it. There's also the manual. If I click on that, here's the manual. But this is an MX-19.2 manual, not a .3. So it will help you, but uh, it's not the latest and greatest. Let me close that. All right, so if I come over here, this is the um, panel. It's currently in the vertical position, and if I right-click and go up to uh, see if I can easily change this um, if I go to applications and settings uh, let's see here I can uh, find out how to change that um, easily system hmm I don't really see quickly how to change it. We'll we'll take a look at that here momentarily uh, to see if we can change it. Let's go ahead and click, change the background if we want to do that. See what's available. Let's look at desktop settings. See what's available out there for us. And uh, remember this conky is probably going to need somewhat of a dark background because it is light. And so let's come down. It's not too bad. You've got a pretty good selection here of, of desktops to look at. Um, this is not a bad desktop, though, that we, we have now. But uh, if we wanted to change it, we can. And um, so let's see what else we have available. Um, kind of like that one right there. Um, so let's take a look at that one. And so we can still see the, uh, the conky here. That's fine. And so let me click, click close here and close it. So this is the background we'll go with for now looks pretty good all right so let's take a look at what we have um, as I said I like the panel to be uh, down at the bottom but we've got this thing at the bottom because I'm running virtual box so I may just leave it where it is um, all right so we have the uh, history managing history clipboard preferences that kind of thing so if you do preferences here uh, Settings, history, actions, exclude, and hotkeys. Can cancel that. This is the uh, uh, wired connection or the uh, network connectivity here. Uh, we don't have any VPN set up. Uh, here is the computer. And so with the computer, if I click that, 
Uh, didn't seem to do anything. Not sure why. Let's click it again. Nope. All right, that's the one to unmount. And uh, let's click up here. We have no updates available, so I don't need to really get in there. But that's how you can update through the GUI. This is my uh, volume control. Okay. Uh, this is the uh, file manager, and uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this is Dolphin, but let's take a look at it. No, it's Thunar. This is Thunar uh, 1.8.14. I like Thunar. It's pretty good. It's hard to tell between Dolphin and Thunar. But this is Thunar, and uh, if I go up and click Browse Network, and I've got some uh, some shares, some Samba shares, and uh, common internet file system shares out there. If I double click on it, there they are. So here's File Store Vol 1. Uh, let me double click it again and connect. And there we go. So I've got all my stuff out there uh, that I can touch through my operating system, MX19. Great. All right. And then we've got uh, the Firefox web browser. Let's fire that up and see what version we have. Let me bring it up to full screen. And if I click on the pancake and go down to help and about Firefox, we are running uh, version 86.0, 64-bit. This is not the ESR version. This is just the regular version, not the extended support version or release. But this, I believe, is the latest version, uh, 86.0, very close to it anyway. All right, so um, and um, if I want to go to a website, I'll take you out to my blog, datapioneer-network.org, and um, you can take a look at that. Kind of came up really fast. That's wonderful. This is self-hosted. I click on the blog. The last uh, blog article I did was installing and using Clam AV in Linux. All right, so okay, great. It uh, brought up the uh, world's best website very quickly. So let's go ahead and close the browser and uh, close tabs here. Let's uh, get out onto uh, here. And uh, this is, I believe, the Whisker menu. And so it brings this up. And we've got Data Pioneer. We've got things across the top, which is the Settings Manager, uh, which are these things here. We'll get into that later. And um, it also has uh, your lock screen, it has your switch user, and it has your log out, power off, that kind of thing. All right. All right, so let's look at all applications accessories. We've got application finder. Uh, we've got uh, archive manager. We have bulk rename, catfish, file search, clip it, conky manager. So if I click that, it will make the conky go away. If I click it again, it will come back or talk, conky toggle. The manager will allow me to refine what's being shown in the conky itself. I've got weather pad. Uh, I've got uh, uh, get hash or GTK hash rather. Uh, I device mounter, uh, light DM GTK greeting or greeter settings. Uh, lucky backup. I've got midnight commander. If you're a Midnight Commander fan, this is a Midnight Commander here. And um, if you get into, for instance, uh, templates or, you know, things like that, you've got two sides, left and right. Um, I was a big fan of Midnight Commander in the day, but uh, I've kind of gotten away. It's an in-curses display of your file system, basically, and your structure. All right, so let's go back to where we were. And uh, we were under application or accessories, rather. Let's get down here. Um, we've got G Calculator. We've got uh, Lucky Backup. We've got MX Updater. This is how you update the system if you want to go through the GUI. You've got Onboard, Onboard Settings, uh, Orage Global Time, Passwords and Keys. You've got other things here. Screenshot for taking a screenshot of the desktop. I'm going to do a two second delay. Click OK to get a screenshot. I want to save that here and it happened to be on grab the region. And so there we go. And so now I want to save it. So I'll click OK and let's save that to the pictures folder and I'll call that the MX19 desktop. 
All right, and let's save it. All right, let's get back in, come back up to accessories, and uh, come back down. Uh, we are on Thunar File Manager, Task Manager, Touchpad, Indicator, and XF Burn. All right, for development, we've got Genie. Uh, that's a, uh, a lightweight IDE. We've got Icon Browser. For games, we don't have too many, but we do have L, L Breakout 2, Mahjong, Peg E, and Swell Poop. I'm not a gamer. Graphics, we've got uh, GNU uh, Image Manipulation Program, GScan 2 PDF, LibreOffice Draw, Nomax, and SimpleScan. Let's get into uh, GIMP and see what we have. So it's GIMP 2.1.0, which is the latest version. And uh, it should come up to full. No, it didn't. Let me uh, bring it up to full screen. And so here we are. If we want to open up the file that we just did a screenshot of, we can do open, grab it, and click open. And there it is. Okay, so we, we have GIMP here. And if you're familiar with GIMP, um, it's a graphics program, uh, graphics editor, and graphics program. Very nice and allows you to do a lot of things with images. All right, so let's close that. Let's come back up. And now let's get back into uh, Internet, which is the next one. We've got Firefox. We've got GNOME PPP, HexChat, which is an IRC chat program. We've got... Uh, Thunderbird, and uh, which is a mail client. I'm, I'm using MailSpring right now instead of Thunderbird for my Gmail. Uh, I will put a link to MailSpring because I think you would prefer MailSpring over Thunderbird. We've got Transmission, which is a BitTorrent client. Okay, I don't use BitTorrent that much, but if you do, uh, that's a good one. I have used it, and I liked it. For multimedia, we've got uh, also Mixer for sound. Asunder CD Ripper, it's a CD Ripper program. You have Clementine for playing music. We've got GMTP. We've got uh, GUVC View. We've got Pulse Audio Volume Control. We've got VLC Media Player. And if I bring that up to a full screen here and do a help about, we'll see what version we have. We have 3.0.12 uh, Veterinary. And so that, I believe that's close to the la latest version of VLC Media Player. Now, MX19 Linux is not a rolling release, so you're not going to get bleeding edge, cutting edge, latest edition of anything, but you get uh, fairly recent versions of things, of packages and software, and this is uh, one of the examples of that. All right, so let's get out of that. Let's go back in here again, come back to multimedia, and uh, we have XF Burn. MX Tools, we've got Brightness, uh, Sistray, uh, Trout, uh Rescue Scan, uh, Format USB, iDevice Mounter, uh, Live USB uh, Kernel Updater, MX Boot Options, MX Boot Repair, MX Cleanup, MX Codex Installer, MX Conky, a lot of MX here because it's MX. So these are generic, uh, not generic, but they're specifically tailored to MX Distro. MX Date and Time, MX Fix GPG Keys, MX Live USB Maker, uh, MX Midi, uh, Menu Editor, MX Network Assistant, MX pack Package Installer. If you click on that and put in the password oh, for root, not for the sudo user, and authenticate, should open up the installer. Take a look at that. Yeah, so here's the installer. This is really nice. I don't recall... Let me bring this up to full screen. I don't recall this being in the uh, earlier version of MX Linux. It could have been that I reviewed about a year, or almost a year and a half ago. Uh, but let's take a look at this. If I want to, for instance, install Krita, let's see if Krita is available. It is. And so I'll just tick the box for next to Krita here and click Install and uh, let it go ahead and install Krita. And... Uh, it says here the following packages were selected. Yeah, I'll go click OK, let it install, which is really nice. This is nice because you don't have to do this in the terminal. You can do it right here from the installer. And once it's installed, we'll take a look at it. Actually, should, that should be under the graphics section along with GIMP. I actually prefer, and I mentioned this in a previous video, I prefer Krita to uh, GIMP nowadays because it does have some possibilities that I like. 
Uh, the more I learn how to use Creator, the more I like it. Uh, it takes a little while to install. There's a lot of packages to install here for Creator. And if it gets too long, I'll pause the video and come back. But it looks like it may finish up here shortly. Okay, so Creta's completed the installation. It only took about 30 seconds after I said I'd be back. So it's finished processing. Let's click OK. And let's close this here. And let's get into uh, graphics. And Creta is right here. And let's spin Creta up. Version 4.4.2. And let's bring that up to full screen. This is a very responsive operating system, by the way. You can see how everything is just clicking right along, no delays. I like it. What I do like about Krita is that you you have these possibilities, which you, you have in GIMP as well, and you've got the menu at the top and things along here. But if you open up an image, let's open up the same image that we opened up under GIMP. And one of the things you've got available in Krita that you don't have in GIMP is you can right-click on the desktop on the image and you can select various things here okay uh, that you don't have available in GIMP uh, so I like that let's go ahead and close Krita and get back in so now we were at uh, MX tools and I believe we were down to um, tweak yeah MX tools tweak user manager welcome NVIDIA driver installer. You've got uh, system keyboard, system locales, and quick system info. All right. We go to Office. We've got uh, Foliate. We've got the LibreOffice Base full suite here. LibreOffice, Calc, Draw, Impress, Math. Let's go to Writer. Bring up LibreOffice Writer and take a look at that. Uh, if I expand, uh, get a little bit, zoom in on the document. Let's go up to help and about and take a look at see what we have. We have version 6.1.5.2. That is a fairly recent version, although we are up to version 7.1, I believe now, or, or 7.2 for that matter. So this is not the latest and the greatest, but it's it's up there. Let's go ahead and click close. And uh, I really like the way this looks. All right, let's close that out. Let's get into Office again. And uh, come down, so we've got the calendar, global time, PDF arranger, and uh, QPD view, F view. All right, settings. We've got about me, accessibility, ad block, ADSL, PPPOE, that's the uh, um, asynchronous digital subscriber line, point-to-point uh, -point protocol over Ethernet configuration. If you've got uh, PPPOE for DSL, I don't have DSL service, I've got... Uh, ATM or cable and if you've got DSL which is phone line then you can use this configuration here for working with that uh, advanced network configuration we've got appearance let's click on appearance and we're on Greybird MX uh, let's go to um, Edwaita Dark I like Edwaita Dark for icons uh, we'll leave that on papyrus for fonts um, that's okay for now and settings that's good alright so we're on a dark darker theme now than we were and uh, so we're on settings and we are on AR and R okay Bluetooth adapters Bluetooth Sistray color profiles desktop this is for setting up the desktop this manager display if I take a look at that we are at 1920 by 1080 60 Hertz all right so very good right out of the box and like it for settings here, let's come down. Uh, color profiles, desktop, desktop manager, file manager settings, firewall configuration. So it does have, uh, let's do put in the root password. It does have a, looks like a full firewall setup. Yeah, here we go. So that's a, the uh, simple firewall. And uh, you can configure that any way you like. You can set it for whatever profile you want for public, for home, for office. So that's great. All right. So let's get back into settings. Come down to um, iDevice mounter, keyboard, mime type editor, mouse and touchpad. I do not have a touchpad, so we're not going to use that one. MX system sounds, MX tools. Let's click MX tools and see what we have there. We've got the live USB maker. You can take snapshots here with the snapshot tool. Uh, under maintenance, you've got CH 
root uh, rescue scan, boot options, boot repair, user manager, menu editor, and cleanup. You can clean up your system with this maintenance tool. For setup, you've got the bash configurator. Uh, if you've got an NVIDIA card, uh, graphics card, you've got the NVIDIA driver installer, which is an assistant for installing the correct driver for your NVIDIA card, which is nice. Codex installer for your codex. Conky date and time network assistant. Select sound, system sounds, brightness and system tray. You've got tweak. Uh, let's click OK. And uh, see what we have here. Um, for effects, the first panel, that's the first panel. If I click that box, it says I can move it to the bottom if I uh, click the box. All right, so let's see if that works. So let me click close. And uh, wait, wait a minute, that didn't work. Let's go back into tweak again. And uh, panel bottom. Let's apply that. All right, there we go. So I've got my panel at the bottom. And uh, if I do a right click and panel preferences, I should be even to able to reduce the size, and I can. I like about 32. There we go. So 32. It is currently locked. So if I let me unlock it and lock it back. Let's go ahead and close this. Um, so I've got my panel at the bottom, which is really where I wanted it. That's great. And the way you do it is through the MX Tweak tool. So it's got a tweak tool now. I don't recall MX Tweak being available in the previous version I looked at a year and a half ago, but it could have. I'd have to go back and look at the video. I will put a link to that video uh, as well down in the show notes so you can take a look at that. All right, so we've got theme. And uh, so I've got a theme set that I can choose here if I want. I want to leave it the way it is right now. I kind of like that. You've got compositor, you've got display, and other things. And so let's go ahead and close that. Um, if I come on down, I've got uh, software. I can fix GPG keys. I've got a package installer. I've got the repo manager. So if I do a repo manager, put in my root password. Uh, that opens up my all my repos. And so here's my EMX repos, my Debian repos. An individual repos. Now, you may have noticed I call it Debian instead of Debian. Everybody else calls it Debian or most people. The reason I call it Debian and not Debian is not because I just want to be different. It's because there were two people way back in the day, back in the early 90s, this is an old distribution of Linux, who developed this particular distro. Uh, the, it's a husband and wife distro uh, programmer team. Her name was Deb, Deb and his name was Ian. And so they combined their first names, Deb and Ian. And so that's Debian. Um, or now it's called Debian, but it's Debian, which is really the way it should be pronounced. MX repos here. So I've got, only got the one here, but I could tick others if I wanted to. I'm going to leave it the way it is now. Let me click close. And we're almost done here. So for utilities, we've got the quick system info, the format USB, and the iDevice mounter. All right. So let's go ahead and close that. You click on that again, and I believe we were in settings, and I, we may have been finished here. Um, onboard settings, preferences, panel, power manager, if you wanted to change that, anything there. Preferred applications, if you click on that, um, the web browsers, the Mozilla Firefox, the mail readers, Thunderbird. If you do get MailSpring installed, you, you might want to go in and change that. Uh, and I believe we are done here pretty much with settings. Uh, no, nope, we got workspaces. So I've only got two. I want to increase that. Let me give myself four workspaces. So we did that. So now I've got four workspaces that I can work with. All right. And so let's look and make sure we don't have any more things in settings besides workspaces. Um, Yep, we've got uh, XFCE uh, 4 screensaver and uh, the XFCE terminal. It's a little bit different from the regular terminal, but not that much. Then for system here, we've got um, some of the things we've already talked about. Uh, I'm not going to go back over those again. Um, Gparted, which is a partition manager. Uh, GRSync, which is uh, an rsync for GNOME. Uh, HTOP, which is we looked at earlier. 
uh, Lucky Backup. We've got Midnight Commander, MX Flexbox, MX USB un, uh, Unmounter. The man the manual for MX users, print print settings, Samba, sensor viewer, uh, semantic package manager. Let's take a look at that and get into there. And so with the semantic pack package manager, if you're not familiar with that, it's kind of like, um, well, let's see, I'm trying to think um, what it's like. The semantic pack package manager is uh, an application that allows you to install uh, packages in the system. It's better than just the software center. Uh, and um, trying to think of another distro that has something similar, but it, it, um, it escapes me at the moment, but I'll think of it here. If I do search, I want to take a look at the search. Let's see if GIMP is here. We, we know it is. So if I do a search here, uh, it should come up and say that GIMP is already installed, and it does say that. So we've got a check mark here next to GIMP. If there was no check mark here next to GIMP, then we could place one there and install a package uh, there. All right, so let's go ahead and close that. And let's get back into system. And we've got, uh, what else we have here? Uh, we have... Samba, and we've got uh, Sensor Viewer, uh, System Profiler and Benchmarker, Task Manager, Thunar File Manager, Tent2, and XFCE Terminal. All right. One of the other things that you can do if you're looking at memory usage and you don't want anything to negatively impact the memory, so you can take a look at a baseline memory for a fresh reboot of the system, for instance, to see how it's doing. Uh, Let's get back into the terminal. One of the things you can do, instead of running, uh, let me bump this up so you can see what we're doing. Uh, instead of running HTOP or some other uh, application, you can run just the command MEM, or free rather, dash H, which is the memory free, human readable. And so that's going to tell you from memory, uh, for instance, you've got a total of almost 4 gigs of RAM. And you're only using 534. Now, the difference here between this and using HTOP is that HTOP's not running. So HTOP's not using any memory resources. So this gives you a, a clearer, a better picture, rather, if you will, of the actual memory usage. If I do spin up HTOP, now it's going to be probably higher than 534. And it is. It's 559. So HTOP itself is using some of the memory here. Uh, to actually produce this uh, particular package on the screen for you. And so the better choice here is to go with uh, free-h for human readable and uh, take a look at it. So we have no swap. We've got two gigs of, uh, of swap allocated. We're not using anything. And then we've got something this tool gives you, this utility gives you rather, and HTOP does not, is it shows the shared and buffered and available out to the side as well. If we do a uname, A for all, take a look at it, we can see that this is uh, Debian 5.8.14-1 kernel. So it's a, one of the latest kernels that we have here. All right. So let's do uh, exit, get out of that. If we come across the bottom, which is all we have left to look at here, we've got uh, the menu here. Uh, and you can change, you can't change uh, that, I don't think. I don't think there's any way to... Uh, alter this menu. Uh, you can't select any alternatives. You've got four workspaces now. You've got your file manager we already looked at, Firefox. Off to the right we looked at the... Uh, I think we already looked at these things. We did when it was in the vertical position. All right, so this is uh, this is MX19 uh, Advanced Hardware Support. So it should... This should be really... If you've got a, a newer machine, this is the one you'll want to pick. If you've got an older machine, you'll probably want to go with the non-AHS version. Uh, but the advanced hardware support should give you uh, support for your new devices on your latest and greatest uh, laptop or desktop system that you might have available to you right now. All right, so this has been a review of uh, MX19 Linux AHS 64-bit. Uh, as I said, the last time I reviewed this was about a year and a half ago. Don't see a lot of changes, but I, I will tell you that it's a very responsive operating system. I like it. A lot of things out of the box. 
a lot of control over the operating system environment. Uh, could this be my daily driver? Uh, absolutely, it could be my daily driver. I'm really happy with it, and uh, I like the look and feel of it. If you liked my video and you thought this video was helpful, go ahead and click the uh, uh, thumb up on the video to give me a thumbs up. That'll help my channel. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and subscribe to it at the end of the video and uh, hit that bell uh, off to the right-hand side, and uh, you'll get notified every time uh, video is available that I upload. So this has been Data Pioneer with the Linux Unix Tech Channel. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.